This is the De Niro wallet. This is by far the best selling wallet that I make. And I think it's because of these pockets right here. These are called stacked pockets or T pockets. Everyone likes these pockets. This is a huge wallet. What I did because of this was design this Byron wallet, which also has a couple of stacked pockets, much smaller, but there's only four pockets in this. So what I've done, because I love designing, is I've created kind of a middleman. This is the Byron 8.0 because there's eight pockets. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna make one of these and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. First of all, you see how this stitching comes around, which is pretty normal, except for right here. It splits, comes around this side and this side. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Also, this stitching looks pretty normal coming through here, but it actually stops right there, but keeps going through here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm also gonna show you how to make these T pockets and what the secret is behind not making them so huge. All right, we're not trying to do a uh, war and peace length video here, so I'm gonna get through some of the redundant parts pretty quick. If you want more in-depth coverage on some of the parts, I've probably already got a video on the channel for them, like hand stitching, tool explanations, and etc. And I will uh, drop some links down in the description. All right, so we've got the main inside body, the back, and the pockets. So these are the T pockets. That's what they look like. And then when you stack them all together, this whole section will look like that. Front and back. Let's get all this cut out. Maybe something like that. But we also need to go over and grab some Herman Oak for these two pockets here. This is just for aesthetics. You know, it's gotta look pretty, right? These are pattern weights. Uh, there's a link down in the description to get yourself a couple of those. That's Horween, five, five, six ounce Horween Dublin. That is not mayonnaise. I'll be doing a video coming up soon about what that is. I also use that on my edges. So stay tuned, subscribe. Okay, I made a little mistake earlier because two of those T pockets are actually coming over here. So we don't need as many as I had before. And you'll notice some of these are marked top and bottom. The top is a little bit one millimeter shorter for the stitching to work out. So we know these Herman Oaks are not the top. So we're gonna put some bot, bottom.
course we don't all have clicker presses so i'm going to show you i've showed it before there's another video explaining all this let me show you how to do that real quick just take your bump jig set it there pattern or other piece same thing whichever Look, we're almost there. Almost as easy as the clicker. Pro oh, hold on. Got to put that corner. Hold on. I mean that curve. There you go. No clicker press. Bonus tip. Golf towels. Put a hook under your workbench. Perfect. Tea pockets. Okay, so you're going to have these three pockets, these three pockets, and then a bottle. The problem when you use five, six ounce thicker leather is that ends up getting to be a little thick. So what you need to do is skive or split the leather. I'm going to show you two different ways. Let's go old school with the skiving knife first, and then I'll show you the bell skiver with some electricity. In order for this skiving knife to work, it has to be really, really sharp. So sharpen and strop very well. And what we want, we want the top to stay the same. We just want that to be feathered from that thickness down to really thin. All right, let's take our super duper sharp knife and that is skiving by hand. So you get the idea. Feather this down. Huh? Let's try it with some electricity. Sharp. Again, that's sharp. This is what we took off. Doesn't seem like much. That's six pieces. So that's the original thickness. But then it goes down to that. Of course, only three are on each side. But when you're looking at that thick down to that thick, it does make a difference. All right, time to quit messing around. Let's get this show on the road. Bonus tip. If you're going to dye your edges and you're doing tea pockets, dye in that corner right there. 
because that'll darken it up and you won't see it when you start stacking them. It's hard to see, huh? But you'll see it if it's not dyed. It'll look like white. So turn that white dye if you dye the rest of it. Next bonus tip. If you're gonna dye your edges, don't dye your Herman Oak, except for these tiny, tiny, tiny. But do that later. Don't forget to burnish those sexy edges. And also, don't forget, get that logo on there. So here's where we are. These pockets, these pockets. We need to put these pockets on this piece. So I'm gonna shoot to have this top pocket stop right there. So I'll mark it. I'm gonna do the right side, show you everything, how to put all the pockets in, stitch it, finish it and everything. The left side, you could just pretend like we did it twice. But first, these two insides, we're gonna finish these two edges just like they're on the outside. They're floating, they're not glued. So I gotta do these edges right here. Bevel, dye, burnish, then we'll start putting everything together and I'll show you all the tricks. Very, very careful with this Herman Oak. It'll suck that dye in like a sponge. Okay, we need these three pockets, four if you count that one. But when your card goes in, you want it to stop. So we need these three stitch lines on these three pockets. Card stops. You just take your dividers and whatever you would do on your edge for your stitch line. Then take our main body piece, top, Herman Oak, bottom, and get one of our bump jigs. And let's get this thing going. So just start at the bottom with your bottom pocket. Get your first pocket down here. Having this corner bump jig helps you could push right up against it. So that's where you want it. There's your pocket, there's your line, and you're gonna need some stitching right there. Keep that there. Get your second pocket, line it up. Like so. Pull that out. Now you're ready for this bucket. Same thing. Line it up, pull it out. Now you're ready to stitch. We're gonna to stitch this top one first. Just put your needles in there to hold it since it is floating. Then you could put it into your stitching pony. All right, how are we looking? Bonus tip, burn these on the front because some nut job will look inside this wallet and see these, even though they're deep, but you'd rather have your burns hidden. All right, let's go. All right, we gotta glue these pieces down. Um, <clears throat> what the hell? Anyhow. Remember we got our mark right here? We're we'll gonna scuff that up with a leather rougher. My son makes these, link in the description. Now, where to stop the glue in the scuff? Put a jig right here to hold that piece there. We're gonna go right to where this curve starts to come up. So, you know, and right around there. So glue, 
and glue the backs out of these. So scuff these and scuff around here on the back side of this. And get to gluing. All right, all glued up from here around here. These are still flapping in the wind. Just need to get those straight. The bump jig helps with that. Mask on a ZB anvil, link in the description. Japanese cutting mat, Rocky Mountain leather. I cut this one to size. All right, we're just gonna put some stitching holes in here just like we normally would and go just with your holes, keep going all the way around. One of these holes is gonna be the secret to that stitch. We're gonna rent some space and share a spot. I'll show you. Remember, Tolstoy has the rights to anything long, like War and Peace, so there's that stitched. We're gonna come down to here, to here, or one of these last two holes here, and just stop and turn around and backstitch. And then we'll pick up later with the rest. The inside will look like one complete stitch run. The backside will look like I showed earlier. And through the magic of TV, I just saved you a few hours. I've got these beveled, dyed, burnished, glued on, stitched, and that's how it looks on the back. So now we're gonna come through here and we're gonna show you how to do that magic little stitch split. It comes one way, goes the other way. Let's do it. First thing, let's put some corners on here. Just a quick, easy, simple arc punch. Next thing we need is this pinstripe and stitch line. Pinstripe because it's really just for looks. So let's, let's put that here. All right, so our magic split is here. And on the pattern, I've got it here. Four holes up, one, two, three, four. So what we're gonna do, I've just pressed in four holes up, make a mark. So we're gonna start our magic right there. One, two, three, four, and right there. And we're gonna stitch between here and here for the front. And of course, get this edge looking pretty and sexy. Now when we're beveling the back here, this is gonna be attached to the back side. So start your bevel on the back where that loop is gonna be. That's where the magic starts. Hole four. And through the magic of film, I have saved you another hour of your life. Beveled, dyed, burnished, and stitched. Now, let's put the back on. One of the questions I get a lot is how to measure this back piece so that it folds and doesn't fold. Well, as we know, I've said before, I don't measure unless I'm making patterns. So I'm not making a pattern, so I'm not measuring. Just take your back piece, we'll make this simple. Put it on there like that. That's how the wall is gonna be when you're done. Fold it over like that. So that's what you need when you're done. Just mark it. Right there. Then get Olivia out of the way. Get your bump jig, square, a sharp implement of some sort. Put it on that line. 
And there you go. Yeah, we're not measuring. We're making this easy. Now we gotta get this on here. Of course, it's longer to accommodate for that fold. So, just use your bump jig to mark where you're gonna glue. Where are we? Right there. Just bump that up there to the end. You're gonna glue to right there. You're gonna glue to right, remember our fourth hole? You're gonna glue to right there. And just do the same on this side. You're gonna glue to right there. And you're gonna glue to our fourth hole. Piece of cake. Just scuff that up. Figuring out the back scuff was a whole lot easier because you've already got your stitching. Just go to the, your stitching. Like that. Bonus tip number 847. We know that this fourth hole is gonna loop over here and we know over here it's gonna do the same and we need that to be sexy and pretty and beveled and burnished and dyed. So we could actually go ahead and get that done right now. Film magic again, got that done. All sexy and pretty and shiny. Now let's glue that on. Just glue one side, binder clips, clip it, fold it, glue the other side, and then we'll get to our magic. All right, I gotta ask, are we having fun? Yep, having a blast. Now just clip these little corners, this one up here, right up to our magic spot. Huh? How pretty. Now the other side. Now we're going to stitch from this shared rental spot hole through here to our magic spot. Back here. Around. Back here. One full stitch run around the outside. Let's just mark those. All right, we have four holes that are gonna be shared. So those four holes have to be punched twice. Already punched now. Now we're gonna punch again. So just be careful. Remember there's thread already in these holes, so you don't wanna cut that thread. But you need to borrow that space and it's gotta go through. So just bite the bullet and do it. So now those, one, two, three, four. So now just shoop, keep on punching. All right, we're getting a little tricky here in our magic spot. So this hole goes through, shares that hole. Now that stitch run needs to come through here. So just put a needle in there, you can see where it goes. Take your punch, mark where the next hole goes. Then bend this back as well as you can and keep on punching. And that's how it looks. Holes done. I didn't mess it up too bad. Holes all the way around the outside. Now we'll start stitching. Come around to our magic hole. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Because that loops over, that stitching, we gotta get these edges done first. So let me get that done. And edges done. Let's get this stitched. We're gonna start right here, come around here, and get back with me in a second. Real quick, this is where we started, through here. It's pretty simple. We already got the hole. You just go back one or two, back stitch, and then keep going. So here we go. Like I said before, I've already got a video done all on hand stitching. So if you want to see more of this in detail and explained, head over to the channel. It's over there. 
And here we go. Remember we're up, we stitched from the bottom all the way around. Remember our fourth hole, one, two, three, four. This is where we're gonna split. So loop over for your top loop. This is where it's gonna get a little tricky. Left needle goes into the right side like normal. Normally I wouldn't pull this all the way tight, but to show you how to do it, so that would go that way. Now here's where this comes in. Your right needle goes into the back left side, but instead of coming through out this way, come through inside and pull it through. So you have your loop and you have your loop but now your two threads are back here. Now we can continue on this back side with these two. Pretty sneaky, huh? All right, meet me on the other end. Okay, we've bridged the gap. We've come here. Now we're getting ready to go into our fourth hole, our sharing hole. This back needle and thread will go into the fourth hole through the back. The back will come through all the way to the front. See that? So it's gonna be a little tricky, but we can get it. So pull the back through all the way. Your right side is still inside, so it needs to stay inside through the back. Don't pierce your thread. Just make it work. Okay, so now you're done through there. Now you just do your loop over like so, and then keep on stitching. These will go through, obviously, both sides. And boom, we got it. Now we just go on like normal. Let's button this baby up. Well, did we do it? Or did we do it? I think we did it. Uh, I am rich. And if anyone was counting, there are 10 separate stitch runs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But Either way, we got it done. You ready to get back to work? I'm talking to you. Hey. All right, a couple more minutes.